better moments. 2002 World Cup. <laughs> I'm a I'm a soccer guy. I Wait, went are you to serious? yeah. I love I love <laughs> football. <laughs> I went to 11 games. Oh, you thought wait, I was joking? No, wait. But let's back up. How long have you been in Korea? Since about 1999. But I went home a couple times and did some theater. and. The whole time, I'm thinking you've been here for like five to ten years. Hello, everyone. And welcome back to Korea Unfiltered. I have another episode for you guys. And today, I have a new guest. Welcome to the show, Brad. Hi. <laughs> welcome. To the show, Brad, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Brad Curtin. I'm an actor and voice actor from Canada. <laughs> I've been living in Korea on and off for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, what would you like to know? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you guys how I met Brad first. <laughs> um, yeah. So I ended up working with Brad about a month, was it a month ago or two months ago? Maybe? Yeah, maybe two months. Yeah, like a month, a month or two months ago for a golf brand. And I was like, you know what? Brad is cool. I like Brad. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, he's a cool guy. So I was like, I definitely, definitely wanted your show. No, your story on the show because I feel like you have a very fascinating story. Oh, thanks. Yeah. And I was like, oh. This is great. Let me ask Brad to be on the show. <laughs> I, and now he's here. Before you ask me, I remember behind the scenes while we're doing the golf brand, yeah. there were those little puppets. Oh, little dolls. <laughs> I'll insert that video in here. It's the cutest little thing. Yeah, they, they fit on the golf clubs, but we were having more fun playing, with, playing with them. Like yeah, little puppets, yeah, making like little videos and stuff with the little puppets. Yeah, so oh, my God. That was, was the, the cutest little thing. Did you see the pictures? They're kind of out. Some oh, of them are out. Oh, no, I haven't, haven't seen, seen them yet. Yeah, 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 they have like four or five pictures out maybe okay yeah i went to check because i was like they haven't paid nice. so <laughs> were there any fun ones or no no, no just like ones. just very like straight up like group these shots. clothes are nice yeah yeah, yeah like yeah, for yeah. group shots and then like some solo shots on there um i haven't checked the website though um do you want to more introduce yourself a little bit more like why did um, you come to korea like I was I was going to acting school in Vancouver, mm -hmm. Canada. Mm -hmm. Oh, are you Canadian? I'm Canadian. Oh, mm -hmm. look, I learned wow. something new today. I thought you were American. I don't know. Why. Yeah, I don't know why. that's all right. You know. <laughs> yeah. Canada. uh, Americans and Canadians get mixed up a lot. That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. um, I took a break from theater school. It was really stressful at the time. It was yeah. like you know, the school is pretty tough. They they end up kicking a lot of people out, oh. and oh. Uh, you gotta. You got to like really act your best. Right, right. So I decided to take a break and I looked for a job. And at first I thought, ah, I'll go teach in Japan or, oh. but then I went looking around and I found postings for jobs. And the very first job I found was mm -hmm. in South Korea, in Seoul. Was it like a teaching job or an acting job? Teaching job. It was teaching job. Yeah. Okay, okay. And I actually had a Korean friend on my mm -hmm. soccer team who was in Vancouver learning English, of she all things. soccer. I'm also a soccer yeah. star a little bit. Ooh. I actually hurt my knee playing soccer last week. Nice. Yeah, I fell. It was yeah. not pretty. We'll have yeah. to get into a co-ed game or something <laughs> sometimes. I'm playing futsal these days, and they have... Oh, really? Yeah, they have uh, matches for men and women. It's so. so hard for me to find, like... Soccer clubs here. I'll give you the website after. I think it's okay, Plab please. or Flab. Oh, I've heard you can oh, put it, something like Plab. Yeah, Plab. put it in. Put it in the I'll video. I definitely do. Actually, I've, I've been trying to play. It's great because uh, they got bookings all over Seoul and like oh. up till even like two a.m. or something oh, wow. during the day. Okay. So it's like whatever your schedule is, yeah. you're, you're teaching or something in Seoul. You can find games yeah. and about basically about ten bucks for two hours to oh, go. That's, oh, that's play actually some, really uh, good. Ten bucks yeah. for two hours is not bad. Yeah, play some futsal. Okay, I definitely need to it's, try that. It's, uh, it's, it's a good cheap. price compared to like a yoga drop-in yeah, class. Yeah, <laughs> even like dance classes here are like 30 per class. Yeah. It's like an hour a class. So yeah. I'd rather just play football at that point. Yeah. Like, I'll just go football. Okay, but yeah. So, so yeah, so I, so I, came, I came over here. Oh, and I had a high school friend. Yeah. My friend Dennis. <laughs> he was teaching in Seoul as well. So I had two friends here. It was yeah. the first job I found. Yeah. You know, typical thing, they, they put you on the plane, they give you the place yeah. to stay. I think at that time, too, they even gave us, like, a, a couple hundred bucks when we got oh, here really? to buy food or... Oh, that's nice, because I don't think they do that. Relocation allowance. Oh, well, that's nice. But the, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of companies stopped relocation allowances yeah. because a fly-by-nighter type person yeah. might take a job, get in... Get the money. Have, in. Yeah, have the free, the free flight to Asia, oh, take wow. a couple hundred bucks, oh. and then... You know, do a midnight them. run like a, a <laughs> day or two that. later. Actually, oh. I ended up with one roommate yeah. in my first year uh, teaching here. And yeah. Uh, yeah. They just. Yeah. The funny thing, the funny thing was he was a huge guy. 
And he was actually a bounty hunter in the United States. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? What was he doing? But of all, Korea? but of all people, away? like, yeah, he was like getting. No, he's a he's the guy who catches. Oh wait, wait, wait. wait. Yeah, but yeah. Was he like? Did something happen in like no, legalities? No, I just think I just think some people back in the day they knew they knew the game and yeah. you know they had no interest in teaching or right, or right. they just knew oh I can go to the other side of the world and pretend I want this job and <laughs> pretend I want this job. <laughs> Get the money and, you know, leave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And okay. so I felt terrible because it's like oh the first goodness. the first uh, week he was yeah. there. I think he left after a week. All of a sudden he was just gone. I went home one day and it's like. Oh, my God. No Martin? warning. Martin. <laughs> yeah, no warning. He left me like a, a John Doe letter or whatever you call it. <laughs> <laughs> I am leaving Korea today. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Brad. You were nice. But the funny thing was I'm like showing him to the restaurants and oh, you could go here. Here's a gym. Here's. And his head is like, here's I'm not the, staying here's the bus enough. to take home from work. <laughs> yeah. He's like, here's the, the supermarket to shop at. You know, I'm just. And just be, like, yeah. I don't care. I'm I was like, I was being so Canadian with the guy, being yeah. so nice, and then he's just like he's gone. It's oh, like, and he never gave you like a reason why he left. Well, he, he left the letter. Well, it was, it was a fly by night. I used wow. this. He's not gonna put that in the letter. Right. I just used the company and everyone here to just to get this free flight leave. to Asia. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now I see why they don't do it then, because yeah. you're just losing money at that point. Yeah. But how was your teaching experience? Like teaching, I I taught for about a year at a. Uh, an ECC, What's or one, ECC? it was a, it was a hagwon for like low level English oh, okay, for okay. kids. Like beginners, basically. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess they would have some higher level classes, but it was okay. it was for kids. Yeah. Um, at first, you know, over time it got better. Mm -hmm. I think they gave us like three days training when I arrived. <laughs> they just threw you in there. Yeah. Well, Get you it. know, you got to practice a little bit, and you yeah. shadowed classes for a couple of days, but then you were within a week, you were like in the classroom with twenty. 30 kids or whatever oh right goodness. yeah and some people are not actual teachers they're just like coming from like maybe a different job yeah. and then being thrown so into yeah teaching. they they have to learn oh, wow. pretty quick oh, when wow. they get here uh -huh. yeah I, I think a lot more teachers do like a teacher training course yeah, and get a certificate these days but especially did you teach in a hug one or a school like a middle it was, school it was a hug one it was a hug one yeah oh, i've heard so many like and at first, too, the schedule was like six days a week, and it, oh. it just felt like oh, a, a split a schedule. Week. You're in the morning, and then you're there all afternoon. And some people, some people would have like early morning and then late night, yeah. and then weird breaks in the afternoon. You have that to make sense. it work for you. Like I would, I would go to the gym when yeah. I had those periods at lunch or something. But eventually, I agreed to do like the kids in the morning and mm -hmm. keep it going and work a bit longer, mm -hmm. and then I eventually I got Saturday and Sunday off after right. negotiating. <laughs> negotiating your Saturdays and Sundays <laughs> off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basic, like, days yeah. off, you're trying to negotiate for There them? was all sorts of tricks the school oh, would use. Goodness. Like, all of a sudden, uh, there's a ho there's a, uh, a holiday, Yeah. and they give you all this this overtime. I forget I forget how they did it. Oh, they would give you, they give you all these extra extra classes and then the holiday would come during the during that week right. when you had all these extra overtime classes right. and then basically the way the schedule worked is you, all your your holiday pay would be gone because you did these overtime classes which would make your 30 hours a week or 40 hours a week mm -hmm. or whatever it was yeah little tricks like that so sus I remember going, we all had a home room and then one day I went in and my, my desk was in the hall and my home room suddenly was like a nursery for, for little pre-kindergartens. No warning. Just no like, warning. Everything's changed. <laughs> Teacher Brad. One day, one day we went in on a Friday and it goes, and they say, oh, by the way, you're moving this weekend. <laughs> well, thanks for the notice so I could pack and. <laughs> it's just like, hurry up and get out. Yeah, there's, <laughs> like, what? there's lots of stuff like that, but yeah. you know. An just, adventure. Yeah, I mean, I guess you just have to deal with it. And what made you go into acting in Korea? Um, well, my, my major in university was mm -hmm. drama, and then right. I went to an acting school in Vancouver <laughs> called uh, Studio 58. Really good school if you're young and looking <laughs> for an acting school. For those Canadians. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the top schools in Canada, so oh, really nice. proud to go there. Yeah. Um, so what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> but here I'm plugging, like plugging my it's school. It's literally always like that. <laughs> right, your school, you're like the ambassador. As an alumni, um, what made oh, so you... so how to get into acting? Yeah, from teaching to acting. How well, did that I, I always happen? wanted to do it while I was here. Yeah. And so eventually I went out for the Soul Players. I was like, I got to get acting. So I went oh. I went and I did a show for the Soul Players. I think it was the, it was the uh, Shakespeare one. Oh, it's like a... 
not a musical, like a theater. Like a yeah, theater. yeah, it was a Shakespeare comedy actually. To, to the one, the one where they do all the Shakespeare plays in like one hour. It was a Fringe show originally. I forget the oh, name wow. right now. I, oh, I also have no but it was like the yeah. second Soul Players show. So yeah. it was like I was like right there at the start of the Soul Players. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we had I had great fun, and then I ended up meeting people. Uh, Dorothy Nam, a friend of mine, she she introduced me to some producers looking for someone for a kids show. Oh, okay. And then from there, I went on and did. To do kids shows. Yeah, I did a I did a whack of kids shows. Oh, <laughs> like was it like a yeah. not Sesame Street? What is it? Like you narrating a story for the kids? Like how um, sometimes there's storytelling. Usually, a lot of kids shows have singing and dancing. One kids show I was on for Sky Life had a bunch of car puppets. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes they have like some a little bit of animation some songs some yeah. dance sometimes they have kids on the shows too yeah which can be interesting acting with kids oh that's that's not always the easiest but not always the know. easiest but sometimes very rewarding yeah, and yeah. they're so cute so yeah, kids are adorable and yeah. did you did you like that i loved doing that the kid shows and yeah. i do i do the kid shows again in, in a in a snap oh, really well you like the time lapse yeah yeah oh, because it's good. like there's like so many rewards like you can enjoy having fun you can enjoy acting you can enjoy making the kids happy that's true i i have a story what so the so the show was called room riders (laughs) and then for the second season it did really well and it was on sky life yeah they decide, let's bring the kids in and we'll make one episode doing an audition for the kids Uh and there's this one little five-year-old he's he has perfect english yeah. he was just so cute yeah uh loved him to death <laughs> and my character's name was sam and he was like sam sam da, 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 sam and asking me questions sam when do we get to see the puppets sam, sam can we do this <laughs> sam are we gonna dance now yeah. sam la, la 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 and we spend the whole day with like 20 kids oh, that's a lot of kids and then they decide at the end let's let's reveal who won the audition live with kids? <laughs> with kids. <laughs> that is oh, not the best plan. So I was, I was like, I was this little tyke's oh, hero. I was like, oh, I was up here. I was a god. Oh, no. I was like, Sam this, Sam that. And he was just like. You have to open the envelope and be like. Yeah, and they decided uh, this, this poor little tyke was just a bit too small. Oh, they were a bit no. too worried about him dancing and memorizing lines. And It's a kid's show, though. They so they turn him down during the audition. And, you know, when we're. I forget whether the judges or someone was reading out the names. Yeah. And, and you just saw this little kid like live on oh. this TV show, just is no. just destroyed. <laughs> they were like perfect. <laughs> Zoom in on that oh, kid. Man. Like, what? That is so mean. Why would they do it live? Uh, they just doing an email yeah, or something. Yeah. That's so mean. In I retrospect, guess, you know. But at that moment, it was probably a great producers idea. are people too, right? So they so do have they, to they make thought, money somehow, uh, yeah. you know, as much as showing the kids who won all happy, yeah. maybe they forgot about the aspect of the sad kids destroying some cry. other kids' lives in the process of the this. kids are gonna be like, I'm never doing this again. Like yeah, this yeah, has yeah. ruined my life in the moment. Like oh, that's so sad. It's like the the bachelor or the bachelorette <laughs> right. for for little kids. You except get a rose. You don't get a rose. Rip their hearts out. <laughs> But during Thank all you. these things that you are experiencing, what were what has what have been your like biggest hardships that you faced living in Korea? Biggest hardships. I think I've overcome everything like mm-hmm. the first year or two. Yeah, this first year is usually the hardest, I, I do have to say. You know, some people say, I miss this, mm-hmm. I miss that. And they concentrate on all the things they don't have here in Korea. Mm-hmm. And then you take that first trip home and then you realize, wow, yeah. I'm missing this, I'm missing this, I'm missing this, you know, 100%. different. And so, you know, wherever you are, I'd say just concentrate on the things you do you enjoy. Do and mm-hmm. then when you're in the other place, you enjoy mm-hmm. enjoy those things that aren't in the other place. And That's true, because the, the first year I was here, I had a really hard time, um, like accumulating Korean culture, like being by myself and all these things. And then I went back to America and I was like, you know what? I really mm. like Korea. <laughs> yeah. I think I'll stay here for a longer time. So it, it definitely takes, a, for, for me personally, it took a while to get accumulated into the culture. But when I did, I was very comfortable, I do have to say. Did you, you acclimated. What did I say? Accumulated? Accumulated. <laughs> You're adding up those you know cultures inside you. I was you. hearing it in my head. I was like, I don't think the word. Did I say that word right? Accumulated. Acclimated. Thank you, Brian. The English teacher has just come out, guys. (laughs) Here's the English teacher. Nah, just for a year. Acclimated. 
Yeah. Bro, my English is trash. But no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Living in Korea, my English has definitely gotten worse, though. I do have to say. It's getting worse. But for the first year we were here, were you, like, lonely in any way? Like, were you like, oh, I'm missing home? Or of, of all the strange things I did that made my life better in Korea was I got a scooter. Oh. I was, like, three months in. Uh-huh. And, you know, before that, I was up in Noan. I was up in the north eastern ah, like section of Seoul. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I made a few friends up there that we went out on the weekends mm-hmm. together with. But but uh, when I got a scooter, all of a sudden, I was driving all over the mm-hmm. city. Um, I drank less because I was I was you driving everywhere. You had to get on a scooter, yeah. But you didn't, have, you didn't have to go somewhere and take a taxi after the subway closed. You could, right. and I'd just go, go places on adventures just checking things out. Right, so right. it just made me a lot more mm. mobile. So mobile. You, you had a lot more like curiosity where you're like, I just yeah, I had, know the I had area. so much more freedom. Mm-hmm. Uh, I usually went every weekend to Itaewon because I would play soccer on Saturday and mm-hmm. I'd, I'd either go Friday or I'd stay Saturday night with uh, some friends that yeah. I played soccer with. Yeah. And that was fantastic. Oh, okay. So would you say you're a social person then? Like you, you're not sure. an introvert? You're more extroverted? Sure. I can be, I can be introverted at times. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I think the, uh, the pandemic brought the introvert out and yeah, everybody. Yeah, it was pretty bad back Netflix, then. Netflix, video games, <laughs> just reading home. books. Or yeah. Just, yeah, just, yeah. For, from what I've seen, for meeting you, I do have to say you have this almost like very friendly or to you where it's, oh, it's you. very inviting like i'm thank the opposite oh, at least i think i'm the opposite <laughs> i'm not a very inviting or type of person i'm more introverted oh. but for you it was very easy to you know have conversations with you and i'm wondering if that's why for you it was maybe a little i don't want to say easier because nobody had an easy time coming to a different country but maybe a little bit more comfortable for you to be able to like hmm. have friends meet people talk to people because i'm the opposite where I don't approach people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't approach. I'm like terrified to approach someone and they reject me. And then they're like, oh. I don't want to be friends with you. Right. I'm terrified of that. I think everyone watching here will say, Listen. Listen, <laughs> no, one's gonna, <laughs> no one's going to refuse your friendship, Paris. I'm so terrified. Yeah. It's honestly like a fear that I have. But for you, you're just so like chill, like open. <laughs> I feel like Koreans would just be like, this guy is great. Like I want to be friends with this guy. You're very friendly too. You're awesome. <laughs> so yeah. I was gonna say I, I go out and, and do some volunteering. Oh that's nice. Yeah. What type of volunteering are you doing? Um when I first my first year or second year in Korea I started uh volunteering at an orphanage. Oh, wow. It was an all girls orphanage oh, and it was I great. Love kids. Yeah. But eventually coming and going I stopped that but I I, I also did like under underprivileged kids. Mm-hmm. There's underprivileged centers around Seoul. I try and, not uh, know about these. That sounds yeah, amazing. Yeah, it's, it's hard. When you make contacts and you start doing things. Yeah. I yeah. think uh, through one of the kid shows I did, I originally met one of the moms that introduced me to some volunteer work. Yeah. And, and then I've always, I've just kept up some of the contacts. Oh, I'm, I'm actually going to an orphanage now twice a month. Oh, so. Wow. What yeah. do you like do? Do you, is it English? There's, like there's international English? middle school students that are doing like a program every Sunday. And I organize some other foreigners that go and help them with their program mm-hmm. every second Sunday. Mm-hmm. And we do, we help them with their English lessons. And then we sort of play a game or do a group activity at the end. I'm actually so interested right now. Yeah, you could come, so like, come on out sometime. I actually want to do it. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. the volunteers, that, the volunteering that I've always heard is like, cleaning street trash or oh, cleaning yeah. dog poo and I'm a germaphobe so I can't do yeah. those like I'm so sorry to people who do volunteer but I want I do want more like personable volunteering yeah. with like connecting with like senior citizens or babies or like yeah. you know that type of volunteering I'm, I'm so interested right now I'm I was intrigued I was part of a group that that did like the uh helping with the serving the food mm-hmm. at the homeless shelter mm-hmm. And uh, we also went around Seoul Station, mm-hmm. gave food to the homeless. Uh, the people who live there, yeah. yeah. And a friend of mine right now, I've gone out once with him, but he does uh, dog walking every weekend. Oh. Hello, Ken. Is, yeah. Uh, is so that, there's, there's other like opportunities, the too. Huh? Is that the company, Hello, Ken? Uh, no, his oh. name is Ken. Oh, is Hello, Ken. Ken. I thought it was the company name. His, Hello, Ken. His wife uh, is a big part of ARC, uh-huh. Animals Rescue Korea. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, actually... Uh, 
about a year ago, we did a fundraiser for ARC, mm-hmm. a stand-up comedy show, raising money for uh, wow. for the charity. Okay. And these days, yeah. I do improv. Yeah. And our improv oh, yeah, group is called improv. Jam Improv. And Jam we improv. every show we do, we do for a different charity. And the pr- so. like proceed, proceeds... Proceeds. There we go. Right. Yeah. Proceeds. Proceeds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to like doubt You're my cl- English is so hard. She's right acclimatizing <laughs> to YouTube. Now I'm like, I don't. Her vocabulary is growing. <laughs> I'm becoming smart on camera, guys. Yeah. Um, so the proceeds all go to like a cause that you guys are supporting, yeah. basically. Uh, we all did right. like the flood victims of Guanacu a summer oh, or two that ago. Was bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was bad down there. And we've done for the homeless at Seoul Station, mm-hmm. and we've done for an orphanage. Uh-huh. Yeah, so and actually, nice. this weekend we're doing a show for underprivileged kids at a sports camp. Oh wow, mm. that's so nice! That's actually, that's tomorrow morning. Oh, so we're very excited. That's so, and it's called your crew is called Jam. Yeah, J A M Jam Improv J A M. There you go. Jam. That's great spelling. <laughs> J A M <laughs> Jam Improv Soul. Jam Improv Jam Improv Soul. That doesn't spell Jam. Jam. Oh, because it's Jam and then Improv Soul. Oh, so it's different. Okay. Yeah. Jam, jam improv, improv soul, or yeah. we, we just say jam improv. A lot, and you guys so. are on Instagram for yeah. sure, right? Yeah. Okay, so Instagram, yeah, we're on Instagram and Facebook. Jam you can improv find us. soul. Yeah, that sounds really exciting. I never knew. Like, I'm, I feel like I am learning things about you as mm. you talk. Oh. I'm just like, wow, Brad, you're so fascinating. There's another improv group in oh, the town if you're looking to do improv, and that's yeah. Soul City Improv. Soul City Improv. Jam. Yeah. Jam. 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 Improv. Jam improv soul. Jam improv soul. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm like starting to confuse all these things. But yeah. definitely check those out then. That's actually really fun. Yeah. And what made you get into improv in Korea? Was it just like a passion that you had? My friend Maggie started Soul City Improv back in the day, around mm-hmm. the same time that the Soul Players started. Yeah. And it was just fun. Yeah, we were doing it in bars. We yeah. were doing shows. We, we did a lot of shows for charity with uh, Soul City Improv too. Yeah. Okay, so that's how you ended up starting. A great... If you if you're ever looking for fun, yeah, find an improv group, go out and join them. Mm-hmm. You know, work on your social skills, work oh, on your I confidence, just yeah. have fun and yeah. yeah. And the whole attitude with improv is just saying yes and uh, yeah. Is it like one of those shows where somebody like tells you a word? Yeah, you have you have certain games with a structure, but you yeah. often get yeah. Can someone give me a relationship? Yeah. Give me a give me a five letter word. Yeah. What's your favorite okay, color? Or just yeah. start with something like that. Yeah. A location, and you can start doing the scene based oh, on I've that. I've never been to one of those. That sounds really fun to actually yeah. watch. Right now, I would say you're pre-, pre... Girl, I can't speak. You're predominantly... <laughs> I'm using all these big words. Suddenly. Predominantly. You're predominantly working in <laughs> acting, right? Yes, That's acting, voice acting, and <laughs> some modeling. Oh, yeah, and modeling. All right. Yeah. That's where we met. <laughs> and how, how is that going? It's like going I know you've done some like pretty big jobs. Well. Actually, yeah, this this weekend, uh, the Road to Boston is coming out. Uh-huh. And Road we actually Boston? filmed it like right at the start of the pandemic or just before the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fantastic story. What's Road to Boston? Can you um, The story, well, I think it was 19, 1947, they sent the, the, young, the young man went over to Boston mm-hmm. and won the Boston Marathon. Against oh. all odds, like no one thought he could do it. Where were the, the Kenyans time. at the time? Because I don't think they living? were there yet. <laughs> <laughs> I think, who knows, he might have been the first, you know, like non-American to That's ever so win the, I'm not sure. But yeah. basically, his two coaches won gold and won bronze oh, wow. in the Olympics. Oh, yeah, yeah. But they were forced to run under the Korean, uh, no, sorry, the Japanese flag. Oh. So they like, were really oh, embarrassed wow. and they were proud they, they had won, but they were really embarrassed. They're not repping korea they're repping yeah korea. yeah because it was like because of japanese occupation yeah, at the yeah. time yeah. but then the the war happened and then at that time then korea was sort of like an american protectorate mm-hmm. and they actually when they went over to boston they wanted them to run under the american flag uh-huh. the american army helped them out getting over there and everything okay. oh. but they refused and they ran under the korean, the korean flag, flag. And, oh, okay. and then he actually won the race that it's crazy. And the the guys who won first yeah. and third were coaching. Well, coaching them? Coaching them, yeah. The guys who won first and third in the Olympics. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. so it's like, you know, generational and this you know, like the pride of Korea. Story. Oh, it's a beautiful story. Is it dropping in theaters or online? Yeah, this, this, uh, this about 10 days, this Chusok. 
Oh, so it's dropping in cheese Yeah, sauce. so okay, this, okay. it might already be out by the it's time It's definitely this out by the time this episode. Go check out. it out, guys. Road to Boston. Go check it out. Brad yeah. makes a, it sh- should appearance. still be in the theaters maybe when this comes it out. Might, it yeah. might be. It might be. Oh, okay, I didn't even know it was like releasing. That sounds like a great story. Yeah. Like what has been your favorite job so far? Ha- has that been your favorite job? Um, that was a good acting job, but probably probably the kid shows. The kid shows are your favorite. Yeah. But sometimes like on a drama or a yeah. movie, you get a fantastic role. Yeah. Meet some famous people. Yeah. Have you ever yeah. met like somebody famous that you didn't know was famous until you met them? Oh, it, everybody's like it's like that on like, most dramas, and true. and they're like, this is da 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 da, and, you, and like, I'm just like, oh, I'm, just just pretend. <laughs> just shake oh, your head. Oh yes. Yeah, yes, I know yes. him. <laughs> it's I, always like that. Yeah, in general, I think for the foreigners involved in entertainment industry, yeah. it's you know we can meet famous people a lot quicker than the average Korean kid. Oh yeah, so yeah, for sure. They're amazed, sure. like you know this person. Or, I'm like, yeah, I just happened to work with them. Because yeah, it was that's a, our job. The uh, the Squid Game guy. Uh, ah, he te, he te something. I don't want to butcher yeah. his name, but yeah, you see yeah, him on him. ads all over the, all over the yeah, city. He's like on Gucci and everything. Yeah, I had I was on a on an advertisement with him and got got my picture with him. Oh, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, because I saw this commercial. It's the Udi card commercial, right? Oh, no, another. Because <laughs> oh, he's also very famous. <laughs> was he on Squid Game too? The no, Uri wait, Kikari? was he? I don't think he was. I'm gonna shut up. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. He might not. Well, that was been another a, case. He's also mm. very famous. He was on this drama called Big Bet. It's like a casino yeah. game. Um, and I remember I saw it on your Instagram, and I was like, Oh my god, that guy's like really famous. Yeah. Like he's he's huge in Korea. Actually, that's fun. That's a fun part too. Yeah. Like right now, so she's talking about this Uri card ad yeah. I did. That's and my actually, bank, by the way. It's Sponsor my bank me, too. Please. I was so happy Sponsor to do it. Sponsor us, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's. <laughs> Uri Bank. Please. Sponsor. Sponsor us. I'm poor. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, uh, downtown right now, the the Uri Bank ad is on, like, a huge screen. And oh, so it's, like... that's fun. Yeah, I just got to remember sometime when I'm in that part of the city to... to like, to, take a little picture. Yeah, I get a little yeah. picture or video when, yeah. when, you're, when your face is on the side of a building. It's Those like, are always, like, such exciting moments. Yeah. You're like, oh, my goodness, that's me. I had it for another modeling job uh, oh, in Gangnam yeah. one time. Just like was right, like right near Gangnam Station, and yeah. And those are like very visible posters and like yeah. Was it a CF or? It was pictures? a clo- it was a sports clothing line. Oh okay, dang. It's not the name's not <laughs> Gangnam. Must be nice. I do so many of them, I can't remember. Oh, the oh my goodness, we're <laughs> just no, too famous no, guys. I can't. <laughs> Yeah, we not just have really. so much work out here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> jokes, jokes, jokes. Okay, so the the commercial with the Squid Game guy. Yeah. Was your favorite shoot? No, no. I mean, it's like just that's a nice opportunity. Yeah, it's just fun to be with famous people mm-hmm. and, th- and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think the kids, the kids kid stuff is it would Jesus. would be my favorite. But but every time you you get to travel somewhere and and be with other people and and do amazing scenes. Yeah. And yeah. always meet like new people and all these. Yeah, things. and then and then get to see it on a television screen or a movie see screen or on YouTube or yeah. the internet. Yeah, seeing so it is cool. definitely the more like exciting part. You're like, oh my goodness, I yeah. did that. And yeah. nowadays, if you're on Netflix or something like that, your your family back home can see you. That's yeah. that's fantastic. And it's even better when it's subtitled. Like they can actually watch <laughs> the show that you're in. It's yeah. yeah. If it's not subtitled, my parents. It's probably like, better when it's more than like three seconds too. Well, that's true. Usually. For, you know, because I've done a lot of image models, like you don't really get a lot of screen time as an image model. Yeah. But as an actor, I'm pretty sure you get a lot more than three seconds. Uh, depending on the role, sometimes. obviously. Depending on the role. But um, what have been your like better moments in Korea? Like your better memories? Better moments? 2002 World Cup. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a soccer guy. I went Wait, are you to. Are serious? Yeah, I love, I love I football. Thought you were I went to 11 games. Oh, you thought wait, I was joking? No, wait, but let's back up. How long have you been in Korea? Since about 1999. But I went home a couple times and did some theater. And The whole time, I'm thinking you've been here for like five to ten years. No. That's why I was like, oh, this has to be a joke. What do you mean 2002? No, well over 20 wow. years I've been here. Wow, you've been here for a long time. Yeah. So the 2002 oh, okay. World Cup was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, 2002 World Cup. We, um, there was like a few venues here in Seoul and I went to them and then there was a venue down in Taejeon. Mm-hmm. There was a venue in Ulsan and Busan and one weekend I rented a van and yeah. we got like like 10 to 12 people from my soccer team and, and some of their friends and family yeah. and we went on a road trip overnight to go watch Ooh. a couple games we all got tickets to down Ooh, south. That's so fun, yeah. 
Is it was a, actually it was a great time. Because I've, I've seen those moments like when they did the World Cup in like Korean dramas or yeah. Disney shows, and it just seemed like such a hype. Like, oh. Moment. Just people well, were having such a uh, good time. I was at the semifinal f- against Germany. Uh, at World Cups, mm-hmm. at World Cup Stadium, and I and I actually had an extra ticket and brought my Korean friend, my Korean soccer friend. Yeah. So he always talks about that. Um, I bet it was such a big moment for him. Yeah, just but be there and watch. But it. you're talking about the atmosphere and stuff. Every time they won the game, when it, when it, oh man, the party afterwards yeah, and the energy and fun people in then. the streets yeah. and and just all red, it's just red <laughs> everywhere because of their team colors. I always see those in like dramas, and I was like, I would love to experience. That. Everyone was just like seriously inebriated <laughs> afterwards out in the bars out in the street till sure. till three in the morning I, bet, I, I, bet. I remember i had a whistle yeah and i had a red card and a yellow card <laughs> and we we're walking down the street in this huge huge group of people and all of a sudden i'd be like tweet 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 <laughs> uh, it, you know if you saw someone do something a little rude or whatever yeah. and i tweet 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 and everyone's like turn what the heck's going on and i'm like yellow card uh, yellow card someone on the street and everyone's like yeah yeah <laughs> That's so exciting. I wonder if they'll <laughs> ever have like another World Cup in Korea. I would love to be like in that. Might take a while to roll around again. There's a lot of countries that have to like hit first yeah. before they hit Korea again. But that's yeah. that's so exciting. Um, apart from that, is there any other memory that really stands out to you? Memory standing out. Yeah, learning learning the culture. Mm-hmm. Has were you? Because I know there's this stereotype where they're like, white people can't eat spicy food. Were you like one of those? <laughs> I'll tell you, when I'm eating, I have my, my favorite joke uh-huh. is, uh, of course, in your first year or two, you learn to use chopsticks of really course, well. Yeah. I think I actually learned them in university. I picked them up and was like playing with them. Yeah. And I, I was eating my craft macaroni and cheese with, <laughs> with chopsticks <laughs> just because I felt it was helping me be ambidextrous or something or developing my mind. I don't know what my I was thinking. My brain is working so hard, yeah. So I could use chopsticks well when I got yeah. over here, but it's still like when you first meet some Koreans, you, you pick up the chopsticks and and they're like, oh, sukrak chalheho, you use chopsticks really well. And, and then I'm like, okay, I just wait for it, I wait for it, I wait for it. And then as soon as they pick up a spoon yeah. and they use the spoon <laughs> or the fork, I, oh, your spoon skills <laughs> you use a fork really well use the spoon really well <laughs> the knife game wow <laughs> like, what? that is actually funny uh, but they they like koreans definitely do like get very hype when foreigners like yeah. they get a little bit something good yeah. about their culture yeah you can eat yeah. the kimchi you can They're use like, oh the chopsticks gosh, you, can eat this, you can eat this and you're just like well it's food isn't it yeah you yeah. know this or you know yeah. that or, or you say like annyeonghaseyo and they're like oh my god you speak korean and you're like not really. I just know I'm young. I say, yeah, but okay, that's that's fine. Yeah, Korea is fun. Korea, yeah. Korea is a good time when you they just hype you up hard out here. They're just like, woo, woo, you know everything. When you're accepted by Koreans, it's like your family, and and they so much love sharing mm-hmm. their culture yeah, and do, yeah. yeah. And especially when you show interest in their culture, I mm-hmm. think they're very like open to teaching it. Like if you're closed off from Korean culture, I think it's. First of all, it's weird because you live in Korea, but yeah. it's it's a little strange. But when you're like, oh, I really want to learn, they're very open to be like, oh my goodness, let me help. Like, let me teach you. Mm. Like, my family does it like this. Like, all this information comes rolling in, which is great because mm. it makes learning a lot easier, I would say. So, yeah, I think that's that's a good thing. Koreans are very friendly. Yeah. What, you, what you're looking for is what you're going to get, though, too. Like, if you... <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear the opposite sometimes, yeah. uh, but generally speaking, case, case by case, I guess yeah. you would say. Yeah. If someone's looking for trouble, they find it. But yeah. if you know Koreans are very accommodating, if you if you believe you're going to meet friends and mm-hmm. find friends, how has it changed? Because you've been here since like the nine, well, sort of been here since the nineties. Mm. How has it changed then and now? There was like one third the subway op- lines open Already? when I got here. Oh. Yeah. Now it's like everywhere. There's like a line for every station. Yeah, the the yeah the subway got better. The yeah. the road system, like tunnels and the highways around the whole country. Yeah. So I think like the World Cup helped with that, and the Olympics helped with that. The high speed train down to uh, the KTX down to Bu- yeah the KTX yeah. around the country. Um, so many things. Sidewalks. There was there were so many uh, like un unpaved sidewalks or oh, or like oh, wow. really really old you know, blocking stones and, and yeah. yeah. And then starting around 2002, 
Everything started becoming yeah. alcoholic. Yeah, and like air care on the cars was really bad back then. What's air so care? like uh, making sure that cars aren't like putting out puffs, oh, you know, okay, like. Okay, okay, okay. So when I was like I driving my scooter around back in the day, if yeah. I took like a white tissue and wiped my face <laughs> after like a 20, 30 minutes, yeah, yeah, I'd be like, Black yeah, yeah. I I'd, I'd get to my destination and go to the bathroom and be like, it's like, oh my, my gosh, it's like <laughs> oh, soot and yeah, yeah. But within two or three years, it was like all the just developed a lot. Yeah, all the horrible polluting cars were mm-hmm. off the road, and there was like bad buses and things yeah. like that. Oh, they were like clean it up, like the, the clean it up. The they cleaned up the Han there. River. They cleaned up the the sidewalks, the roads, yeah. uh, restrooms. You know, it was, it was quite the joke back in the day that you go in the restroom and, you know, a man and, and then there'd be a woman going in or, mm-hmm. you know, like a lot of bars would have like a joint, one big restroom. And it was just weird for oh, th- you men mean and there women were no, to share. Like, separate yeah. bathroom. It was just one. Yeah, you're, you're, you're using a facility and a woman walks by to go to the, the stall. Oh, wow. I still hear about like you know, people using the facilities and, and, you oh, know, the older wow. lady comes in and is mopping oh, between their care. legs. <laughs> they're like, I'm here there's to There's still work. a bit of that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, back in the day, it was, there was a lot more shared restrooms and, oh my goodness. but now, yeah, uh, it's rest stops rare. on the highways and things like that. It's so clean and so yeah, nice. Even like public, uh, bathrooms in the subway are very clean. Yeah. Like yeah. They're constantly cleaning it. Like yeah. constantly cleaning. Yeah. Everything's much more modern and oh, improved cool. and, Oh, you, you got really, to see the before and after. Yeah, and, and, and you know, amazing. a lot of people complain about you couldn't find this or you couldn't find that. Yeah. You could pretty much find everything now. Oh, with, no, for sure. You know, maybe a very rare brand of your favorite food or snack mm-hmm. or or your rest, your one rest, your favorite fast food restaurant's not mm-hmm. here, but mm-hmm. but compared to... Back, back. Yeah, before yeah. 2000. <laughs> Nothing was out here. Was McDonald's out here? Yeah, McDonald's. Dang, McDonald's was always here. Everywhere. And a few Burger Kings. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. just, like, were taking everything. Yeah, that was the treat my first year here. It was like, yeah, let's go to McDonald's. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. Whoa. You get your taste of the West. And, <laughs> yeah, rom, 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 and uh, uh, that's enough for at least another week or <laughs> the two. The taste uh, of the West. Yeah. That, is, that is such a good way of putting what McDonald's is. It was like, yeah, there was a McDonald's. And then there was, like, some, some like, high-end, like, Bennigan's or, or TGI Fridays. Uh, yeah, yeah. And everyone would want to go there on the weekend so they could have a hamburger. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know, like Western, f- yeah. Now you can have Western now food hamburgers everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. Everything. Like even some personally, I think some Koreans make burgers better than like franchises from America. Like Quite they've likely. just become, <laughs> yeah, they've just become very like good at making Western Western yeah. foods. I would say. What about when it comes to like the culture? Because I would say the they culture. were. Do you think they were open to foreigners back then? Because now sure. they don't care. Sure. You think they're open to foreigners? Sure, but really? on average, I'd say the English level is is much higher. Oh, yeah, because um, a lot more people do speak English yeah. now. Yeah, and maybe a lot more kids have extra English classes these days or better better English classes at their uh, at their schools. Right, right. So in general, you could speak, speak English a lot more mm-hmm. here and there. Mm-hmm. Tourism and, you know, K-pop, K-drama, K-everything is like, up, it up, is up. really K everything. <laughs> K everything is out there now. Yeah. Um, and I think that's also maybe why a lot of foreigners are being very attracted to Korea, I would say. But back mm. then, what do you think was the attraction to Korea? Like now, when I see it's like the how you what ate. What was it? I'd was say it was just like an alternative oh, okay. place to go to mm-hmm. teach. And yeah, it was just, it was interesting. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there wasn't such so much hype because of yeah. K dramas and, yeah, and K pop and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've met like people coming over here and just just studying Korean just mm-hmm. cuz they like Korea because of those things yeah. and taking some dance classes yeah. and like a vacation semi Korean culture learning. Yeah. You know, for a few months or a month or a week yeah. or now they're like just so there's a lot of foreigners now, which is comforting for me <laughs> because yeah. we're not so too different mm. now. It's more like Oh, you're a foreigner. That's it. Mm. You know what I mean? That's yeah. That, that's all. But There's always been lots of foreigners around Seoul because of the army base. Yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah, but the now they're, mo- they're moving mostly down to Pyongyang. They are. Like, even their big base in Itaewon is gone now. Like, they don't... Mm. There's no army there. Which is interesting because now when you see nightlife in Itaewon, there's not a lot of army yeah. dudes, like, walking around. Back in the day, I played soccer with, we had a lot of uh, army guys on our soccer team, 
and we'd play on the army base sometimes, mm -hmm. which we'd look forward to because mm -hmm. uh, there, wa there weren't many grass or oh, turf pitches yeah. back in the day. It was all gravel. But right. starting around 2002, almost every school mm -hmm. eventually got the turf pitches. So they were just developing everything. Yeah, everything's. They were like, we have to make the country look even better than it is. Like, yeah. make it way, way better. And now. they missed something along the way, they, they eventually realized. Because Korea yeah. is very developed right now. Like, very, I would very. say probably even more, devel than, more developed than some states in America. It's, it's like, mm. I don't want to say all of America because I don't want people to come for my neck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want anybody sending yeah. death threats or something. What would it take for you to leave Korea forever? Uh, for me to leave Korea forever? Yeah. And not uh, like that'd look be, back. That'd be a tough one. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not like, I love Korea, but I'm not like fully like, I'm going to spend the rest of my life in Korea. Right. Um, I'm open to going wherever, mm -hmm. Canada or, or another country. Mm -hmm. Um if I was to leave Korea forever, it would probably be because of uh, marriage mm -hmm. and my, my my partner needed to be in another place or an amazing job somewhere else. Right, right. Um, yeah, I might, I'm not sure, but I might want to raise kids in Canada if I had kids mm -hmm. just because I know they just have a, have a lot more laid back. Not that yeah. the way of bringing kids up here is, is bad, but... But it could put a lot of stress a lot of and pressure, pressure children, on kids yeah, to succeed in school and studying. Mm -hmm. And I think kids should have just a, you know, a bit more free time to yeah, sure. run around, play some soccer for or sure. uh, road hockey or, <laughs> or whatever it is kids do in Canada these yeah, days. Yeah. It's probably just playing video games. And staying <laughs> home because nobody really plays outside anymore. Oh, I, I hope they do. Oh, I really like playing outside was such a nice thing when we were yeah. kids. Yeah, just being outside. All There's the time. so many screens available nowadays. So, Everybody so has, yeah, like, I gotta get away from my screens too. Yeah, I mean, I literally have two phones right now. I'm like wearing this thing. So two phones? <laughs> what do you need phones. two phones for? It's the influencer in me needs two phones. You get you get like certain contacts on one, and certain on the other. And I've one's seen people do that. Phone. One for <laughs> friends and one for business. Oh my goodness, I would never do. No, one's actually one's just for. Um, picture taking like the iphone oh, has nice. a better camera than the android what advice would you give people who are trying to come to korea like trying to come to korea if you want to teach english over here finish your university degree that's a requirement mm -hmm. and just to get an easier easier job uh to find the job a lot easier do one of the i think it's a one month tesl or mm -hmm. tefl I forget what you call them all, awful, but yeah, yeah, do do one of those one month courses because that'll give you some teaching experience. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll right across the board. It'll, it will right. help you out. Mm -hmm. And what if it's not teaching? If it's not teaching. If you if you want to act over here, uh, get your get your headshots. Get get a comp card together. Um, yeah, get some get some experience there mm -hmm. because approaching the agencies here, if you have nothing, there's there's so many people that want to come here and act or model. So. Uh, have some experience first. Get some nice photographs together. Mm -hmm. Start your Instagram now because that could make a difference too. It's if, like a portfolio now. Yeah, if you're approaching an agency and you know everything else being equal, someone's as equally talented, equally as good looking, but someone has more more training, mm -hmm. they'll probably hire hire that person. That person more, yeah. uh, someone has ten thousand followers versus no Instagram. Get the person. Who has, yeah, I'm seeing like yeah. like ads some t sometimes these days, and it's like you want here's this job, uh, people with ten thousand followers or more. <laughs> do you do you have ten thousand followers on Instagram? Ten thousand, so I do get those jobs. Nice job, nice job. <laughs> I which, which they're not like jobs that you need like. Well, for, for the ones that I've gotten, it's more like an influencer job. They yeah. will be like, you have a lot of followers, so we'll give you this product and pay you to post it something like that yeah but instagram does matter these days it does sure. matter uh, my friend has a uh, has a movie production company mm -hmm. in canada oh okay yeah and he says literally he'll hire some actresses for movies based on the instagram the instagram following yeah because they kind of give eyes to his it's film like, too I guess. yeah it's like someone wants to cast this person it's like how many how many three million? Oh yeah, yeah cast her wow <laughs> and you're like don't care if she can't act <laughs> there are more eyes on my film because of this. this he said he's like shaking his head sometimes when he sees some of the acting, but it's Ew. but but it's it's almost like a certain amount of followers mm -hmm. guarantees a certain amount of eyeballs guarantees a certain amount of sales 100%. and success. Yeah, 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 hundred 
100. I think you, your personality and being friendly and doing things for other people, everything else being equal. Yeah. And you have the same followers and same talent and everything like that. People want to work with someone who's nice and kind oh, and smiles and. In Korea, like I, I feel like being humble is very important, especially in the entertainment industry. Yeah. Especially because Korea has this whole respect thing that they have. So being humble, um, and being nice, just mm. being a good person, technically, yeah. I think it's, it goes really far in Korea. I would say. And learn Korean. Yeah. I studied here. a few times, and I went to like level three, mm -hmm. and then I got busy. But uh, I do know. People over here who have a lot of success, a lot of them have like very high level Korean. Right, right. If you really want to come over here and do any type of work and you study Korean early, mm -hmm. you're just like. You're going to shoot up a little yeah. faster than someone who doesn't know Korean. They so. hire people th that have some Korean and they're comfortable to work with. Some Koreans don't have great English, mm -hmm. and but they're still working in the entertainment industry. So if you have great Korean, it just makes their job that much easier and you're that much more hireable. Well, 100%. Because the director is also going to, they don't have to stress with giving English directions. They can yeah. just give Korean directions and, and that's it. But anyways, guys, I think that's it for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Korea Unfiltered. And I'll see you guys on the next. Oh, I'm sorry. And thank you, Brad, for coming on the show. Thank you, Paris. <laughs> it's been a fantastic time. I had a great time talking talking to you and also learning so much about you. Oh, I had a, thank I had you. a good time. I learned so thank much you. about you. But anyways, guys, I'll see you guys on the next one. Brad, say bye. Bye. <laughs>